A few years ago, Nassim Nicholas Taleb wrote a book called The Black Swan, which was about randomness and the inevitability of improbable, unpredictable but hugely disruptive events, like the banking crash of 2008. Taleb, a derivatives trader by profession, made a great deal of money out of that and other crashes by prudently investing on the assumption that something would go wrong, even if nobody could predict what it was. Since then, he's become an academic and now he's written a follow-up. It's called Anti-Fragile, How to Live in a World We Don't Understand. And we invited him here to the BBC's brand new broadcasting house in central London so we could meet the author. Nassim Nicholas Taleb, let's start with a definition. Everyone knows what fragile means. You have a coffee cup, you knock it off the table, it breaks, that's fragile. The table, on the other hand, is robust, it's resilient, you knock it, nothing much happens. You have a third category, which you call anti-fragile. Define it, please. Exactly. It's, uh, uh, once you define fragility in a certain way as what does not like volatility and does not like variability, once you define fragility that way, and uh, statist for statistical reason, you can, then the exact opposite is something that loves volatility, gains from disorder, uh, variability, uh, stresses, time, and, and similar uh, uh, um, uh, phenomena. So if instead of being harmed, it gains from it, it's exact uh, opposite, then this category of object doesn't have a name because it's not resilient, it's not robust, it's something beyond. So there's a lot of things that require, actually, the disorder to function and variability. And, of course, we're harming them by depriving them of disorder and variability. Let's talk about some anti-fragile systems, then. Darwinian evolution, that's anti-fragile. I'm against Darwinian evolution from a moral, on a moral standpoint, and we have to find a corrective for it. Uh, you know, I'm against nature. I, I love nature, the way it manages the risk, but not how it breaks some eggs, okay? So we can talk about this. So I'm not in favor, but nevertheless, if you have 10 offspring, and the 10 survive, then you're not going to have evolution. Or likewise, if you don't have genetic uh, uh, drift, if you don't have replication errors in the DNA, you don't have uh, evolution. So, so you need some amount of randomness for Darwinian evolution. Uh, your bones, your bones require, I mean, we go to the gym to work out our bones. You don't work out the, the, the washing machine, you don't take it to the gym, but you take your, yourself, your, your body, subjected to stressors and, and variability. So systems that appear to be robust, like the banking system from 2008, are in reality fragile because a single shock can throw them completely. And this is the idea that you came up with earlier, which you called the black swan idea. Exactly. There are two kinds of systems. There are systems uh, where the errors are small and used as fuel for improvement. And there are systems where the errors are large and harmful and terminal. So uh, let me compare two systems. The transportation system. Uh, ever since we've had transportation, you know, from the Titanic to plane crashes, an accident lowers the probability of the next accident. You see, so lives are, are, are lost, but future lives are saved. Every accident improves the odds of, uh, of having a safe flight. And because we never let an error go to waste. Now, on the other hand, the banking system, the failure of a bank is exact uh, ex as the opposite of, failure of a plane crash makes the next bank failure more likely. That, it's not a healthy system. And we need, if you want to model things properly after nature, while retaining the moral values that we have accumulated since enlightenment, then we, have, we need uh, things to be designed in a different way. That's easy to say, but in a world of big top-down organizations, governments and so on, actually very difficult to achieve in practice. I actually disagree. There, there, you can come up with single rules, small little rules, so long as you give them to bureaucrats. Uh, decentralization, people have more skin in the game. A uh, big thing for me is transfer fragility from individuals to the system, like people who have upside and no downside. So define skin in the game? Skin in the game is when you're harmed by your mistake. So a bureaucrat isn't harmed at Whitehall by a mistake he makes because it's theoretical. But if you live in a village, you, you know, your friends, you, you feel that you made a mistake as a mayor and, and you, or a mayor or whatever, councillor. So, so you have this kind of uh, shame checking you. Um, <laughs> decentralization is a must. And, and actually, mathematically, I show how size okay, uh, compounds mistakes. For example, 100 million pound projects uh, will have 30% cost overruns, more 
in proportion, right, than a five million pound project. So you think you're saving money by being big, but you paid back, uh, you know, by being large because the errors are a lot more harmful. You're a romantic, aren't you? You believe that Switzerland is the least fragile country because it has the least intrusive central government. You believe that small is beautiful. You believe that big is dangerous. You believe in community. You believe that we all should go back to a world in which everyone knew their neighbours. It's a very attractive right-wing romantic notion, but it's very difficult to achieve in practice. I am more left-wing than right-wing, if you look at the, what I'm saying, that I want to I, I protect the individual from, from large corporations. Because now, when, when I talk against a centralized state, then people automatically think I'm on, a, you know, uh, I'm on the left, on the right. But when I talk about large corporations, then, then I have, so believe me, I have a lot of flack from, uh, from these people. Uh, the, the point is, we live in a world today that has too much complexity to afford to make mistakes. And we can no longer make mistakes. It's very different. So I'm not in favor of changes of political system, so much of scaling the decision uh, you know, for the projects to make them a lot of small uh, errors, to, to, to subject them a lot of small errors rather than one large error. What difference do you hope this book will make? It, it has already made a difference, because what I did is I went on the web and I had, uh, you know, started publishing chapters separately and got a lot of, lot of, I had something uh, I never expected to have is people using this idea to integrate it in their lives. I've always had this idea, but now I see it on paper. What is central here is that I was a trader for 20 years. And when you're a trader for 20 years, you view the world very, very differently. So uh, there are things that will help people. If not, then I'll have to continue. But this is, um, uh, you know, uh, I transform all my books in one big volume, um, in one big uh, work called uh, the Incerto, uh, you know, dealing with incertitude more than uncertainty. And, and this, I'm going to make the first volume. <laughs> and all my other books, you know, follow from there. Plus a technical appendix. Nassim Nicholas Talib, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me.